Hello and welcome to part 11 of the video series in the Thunder Game Engine. In this video, I want to show you how to create a timer that once the timer runs out, you either win or lose the game. Let's go ahead and jump in. I'll click on my splash screen to get rid of it, and I'll change my render engine up here to the Thunder Game Engine. And I want to split this window into two, of course, so I'll grab this little top area up here and I'll drag it straight down, and I'll change this bottom 3D port into a logic editor window. Now, to create a timer, we actually are going to be creating a text object in our scene. So, with the cube selected, I'll press X on my keyboard to delete it, and I'll press Shift A to bring up my Add menu, and I'm going to add, not a mesh, but a text object. If you're familiar with text objects, you'll know that if you go into the object's edit mode, you don't get access to vertices and edges and faces like you would a mesh, you get access to the actual letters, and you can type just like you were typing in a text program. So. I'll press tab on my keyboard to go into edit mode. I'll press backspace a few times. I'm going to type the number 5. So, 5, and I'll press tab to go back into object mode. I type 5 because I want this to be a countdown timer from 5 seconds. And I'm keeping this short for this video, but you would probably want to have longer than that, maybe 30 seconds or a minute or whatever it is for your game. Okay, so we have our number 5 in a text object, but we want to actually manipulate that with programming. We want this program to, or our logic, to tell it to count down once per second. To do that, I actually have to go down here to my properties panel in the logic editor window, and if you don't have that, you can press N on your keyboard with your mouse in this window, or you can press this plus. And text objects, unlike meshes, have a second kind of property. They have a special one-off, that means you can only have one of them, text game property. So I'm gonna click add text game property, and that lets me have access to the actual text that's inside this text object. I can actually change the number five to number four quite easily now with this special text game property. I don't want to be working with strings here. I want to work with numbers. It would actually be tempting to work with a timer type of data, but no, we're going to be working with integers. And integers are whole numbers. This timer data type is actually like a number with thousands or even more than that. It's very, very fine and precise. We don't need that, we only need integers, whole numbers. So I'll use that data type. Let's go ahead and program this. I'll press N to hide that, and I'll kind of zoom out by scrolling so I can see my sensors and controllers and actuators. So what I want to happen here is I want a sensor that's going to detect once per second, or fire once per second. To do that, I could use the delay sensor, but instead I'm actually going to use the always sensor. And normally this always sensor does or triggers at all times, it's just always running. But I'm gonna actually activate pulse mode, and that's this button over here. If I hover over it, it'll say activate true level triggering pulse mode. What that means is once I click it, I get access to this frequency. And the frequency at which I want this to fire, and in which I want this to count down, is once per second. Now, our frame rate, or our refresh rate for our game, over here in the properties window, under the camera tab, you can see the refresh rate is 60 times per second. That means if we want this to fire once per second, we want to change this frequency to 60. That means it's going to fire as soon as the game starts, and then it's going to wait 60, and it's going to pulse or fire again, and then 60 frames later or 60 hertz later, it will fire again, and so on. Let's go ahead and add an actuator. What do we want to do here? Well, I want to change the property or the text property of this text object. So. I'll click on Add Actuator. I'm going to add a Property Actuator, and I'll connect these up. Now, what I want to do here is I don't want to assign a property, or I don't want to assign a value to a property. I want to actually add a value. Now, you know that I want to subtract a value, but there actually is no subtract option here. But using a little bit of math, we know that we want to change the text property, the only property that we have. If you're familiar enough with math that you know that if you add a negative 1 to a number, it's the same as subtracting 1. So in this value area, I'm going to type in negative 1, and I'll press enter, which when you add negative 1 again, it's the same as subtracting 1. Okay, so on this text object, once per second, once per 60 hertz, it's going to be a subtracting 1 to the text value that we already have. And by the way, this object, or the text object, is smart enough to know that the character that's inside there is a value number, and it treats it like that, so it's not going to do anything funny here. Let's go ahead and press P to play, and it starts off counting. Great, it started actually 4, counts down, and it'll actually go into negative numbers, which we don't want. We want to actually trigger 
a, a screen change or a, a scene change to a you win or a you lose screen. So I'm going to press escape to get back out of gameplay mode. And instead of having five here, because I want to actually start counting at five, you'll notice that my timer started counting at four because this always trigger true mode actually triggers as soon as the game starts, which means it actually looks like it starts at four. So I'll press tab and change this number to six and I'll press tab again to get back into object mode. So now if I press P, it starts at five and then waits a second and goes down from there. Once the timer gets to zero, I wanna switch screens. So I'm gonna make a new scene. Uh, right here, this scene is called scene. I'll type in game instead. I'll press the plus. I'm gonna make a new scene and this is gonna be win. We're gonna call a scene win. I'm just gonna add a monkey head mesh for win. That's great. I also have a camera. Whenever you switch scenes, it's a very good idea to have a camera so that you know what your view is going to be. Let's go ahead and press Shift A. I'm going to add a camera. I'm going to press Alt R to clear its rotation. And maybe what I'll do is I'll move it up and I will rotate the monkey head uh, 90 degrees, R90. And that way, if I look for my camera, I can see the monkey head, which means I won. Let's go ahead and go back to our original game though, because I need to trigger that scene change. So what happens is I want to check to see using a sensor what the value of this text property is. So with the text selected, I'll go to property. We're going to add a property sensor. I want to check to see what it is. So once this sensor, this property sensor detects that this value is equal to zero, I want to switch scenes. What property are we talking about? We're talking about the text property here. So I'll click here and select text property. That wouldn't show up if we didn't have already this property enabled. And I want to check to see if it's equal to zero. That's what this equal means. We could also say less than zero or less than one. That would also work. But in this case, we're working with whole numbers. So it will be equal to zero eventually. Let's go ahead and add a scene actuator. So I'll add a scene actuator. We're going to connect these two things. And I don't want to restart the scene. I want to set a new scene. I want to go to my windscreen. So again, we have an always sensor in pulse mode that has a frequency of once per second. That means 60. It's going to take away or add negative one to this text value using our text property. And once it detects using this sensor, this property sensor here, that the uh, text property is equal to zero, it's going to change the scene. Let's go ahead and see if that works. I'll press P and we'll watch the countdown timer work. And once it gets to zero, we see our monkey head and we've won or lost the game. That'll be this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.